The recent CAA changes to the UK drone code represent some of the most significant changes to how you'll be able to fly your drone in the UK for some time. So here on Geeks Varna, your home for drone regulation explainers, we are breaking down each of the topics and killing off a few myths along the way as well. To make sure you keep up to date on these and our deeper dive live shows, subscribe to find out when new videos drop. Today, we're going to be talking about drone class markings and how this is going to impact your drone flight, probably in a good way actually, and how the switch between class marking systems in the UK will work in the real world. The information in this video is a mix of detailed research, information directly from the CAA and from manufacturers like DJI. So this is the definitive guide on UK drone labels. To make things clearer, I'm going to explain briefly now a couple of bits of jargon that you're going to hear often in this video, so you know what I'm talking about each time, but without me needing to re-explain it, making this video three times as long and more complex. When I talk about C labels, I mean all EU class markings, so C1 to C4, etc that appear at the moment on most consumer and enterprise drones sold in the UK. When I talk about UK labels, that means the UK's own version of the class marking, going from UK zero for sub 250 grams through to UK one for Air 3Ss, that type of thing and upwards. Another quick explainer is why we are getting C label use in the UK from 2026 and then switching just two years later to the UK label system. This goes back to 2020 and the fact that the UK adopted the EU regulations for drones, but as we are not part of the EU or EASA, this was a mirrored version. So essentially the same in most ways, but it was UK law, it was repeated, and not us being part of the EASA region, how the UK was before Brexit. That means that the deployment of class markings in the UK under UK law need to be a different system from the EU, because otherwise it would be like the UK randomly deciding to follow consumer protection law from the USA or some other random country. We would be subject to changes in their law that another sovereign state puts into place. If the EU decides to change C labels, that would by default change the law in the UK. Um, that just wouldn't work for so many reasons. This can, however, benefit us. For instance, the UK, we will have more freedom with sub 250 gram drones and C1 drones than users in the EU. So not adopting the system completely as such, even if that was possible, can actually be a good thing. So technical bits kind of out of the way, let's get to the fun bits and explain the systems and how they work together. Please keep in mind that everything from this point is from 2026 in terms of when it comes in and does not have any impact in the UK until then. It's a really important point to remember. So the UK CAA have published the new drone code. Their explainer and mix of essential legislation, guidance and advice. Within it, they have explained the temporary recognition of sea label drones with a gradual switch across to UK label drones over a two year period. Now, although this means a chunk of extra admin for us as drone users, the way the switch will happen is actually pretty simple and Overall, good news for UK drone users. From 2026 until the end of December 2027, the UK will recognise EU C labels already showing on your drone and used across the EU, of course, for use with the intended benefits. During this time, we will shift across to using UK labels, starting off with just newly released models. So drones released in the UK, for instance, by DJI from 2026 will need to show a UK label, but all the existing sea label models get the full benefits during the full two year transition period, no matter when they were purchased. So if you buy, for instance, a DJI Air 3S in January or February, you'll still get those sea label uh, benefits. It won't have to have a UK label because it isn't a new brand new model coming to the marketplace. We've been discussing the plans for UK labels with the UK CAA and they have provided us with some essential information. The UK label process is not expected to be a hard change, a brick wall or anything else like that, or a, or a reset of C labels. They are not bringing them in because they want to change the standards as such, but because under the law, we cannot use another country system, as I explained before. What you should expect are some small software changes and the leaflet will be the UK focus leaflet that, that will be included in the box under the product standard. Otherwise, the standards will be similar 
to EU sea labels. The CAA tell us that they have been talking to the main manufacturers and none have expressed any concerns. The CAA also tell us that if they divert from the EU version, it will be because it suits the UK and UK users. Keep in mind that the CAA clearly stated at proposal stage with all of this, that their main aim was to bring these changes in without taking people's drones out of the sky or creating a financial burden for drone users. So this all tallies with me. I'm more than happy to criticize when bad things happen, but it would appear that the switch from C labels to UK labels for us users will actually be pretty simple. This also tracks in terms of our discussions with manufacturers like DJI, who confirm they expect to gain UK label approvals on most popular drone models on the market at the moment. As you probably already know, in the UK open category, so where we fly most of our drones, is broken down into three subcategories, A1 over people, A2 near people, and A3 far from people. A1 first, and this allows flights with zero separation of uninvolved people in congested areas like town centres and without any separation from buildings. It also allows safe flights over people who are not crowded together. To benefit from the use of this airspace, you'll need to be flying either a legacy 250 gram drone or one that holds a C0, UK0 or UK1 label. You will also be able to fly C1 label drones, so beasts such as the DJI Air 3S from 2026 until December 2027. This is so exciting as it means we can use larger drones like the Air 3S that for my old eyes, give a good chunk more VLOS options. And keep in mind that we would also expect a popular model like the DJI F3S to gain the UK one label. So at some point DJI will actually release that, I'm pretty sure. A2, near to people next. This is essentially the same locations, physical locations as the A1 airspace. So town centers, etc. But rather than flying over people, you get pretty close. But with even heavier drones. To unlock these benefits, you'll need to pass the A2 CFC and fly with a UK2 label drone or C2 between 2027 and 28. This allows you to fly within 30 meters of uninvolved people, reducing that to just five meters when in slow mode. Now, as this is also with a permission or certificate from the CAA, there are some other smaller implications, but you'll learn those during the A2 CFC course. But it means the absolute beast of a drone, the DJI Mavic 4 Pro, will fly in this airspace, truly unlocking the entire idea behind the A2 CFC. Another bit of positive news is that legacy drones will still be able to fly within the A2 airspace as they can today. So sub two kilogram drones that are not marked with UK or C labels can keep flying with the existing 50 meters separation of uninvolved people, but still within congested areas like town centers. The sad news here though, is that a pretty popular existing benefit a2 CFC holders being able to fly sub 500 gram drones in the A1 airspace will be ending in 2026, which is a shame. So enjoy it while we can. So if you want to fly over people who are not crowded together, you will need to be in the A1 airspace and use drones like the DJI Mini Range and Air 3S. If you want to fly larger drones like the Mavic 4 Pro near people, you can do that in the same physical location but with an A2 CFC certificate. The A3 airspace, so far from people, stood in a field or something similar to that. That gets access, as you might expect, from all of these listed class drones, but also random non-marked stuff. The separations are what we have learned to expect here, and the first time that we actually start seeing those separations measured against buildings and conurbations. One point I want to make here is this video is of course talking about EU C labels and UK class marking labels and as and when the two will interact and come in. This is not a comprehensive explainer of the drone rules. For that, I would recommend popping across and viewing our drone guide series uh, playlist and actually finding out more about the drone rules. There's lots of things in there you need to find out, like FRZ, VLOS, and lots of other things that can get you in a lot of trouble if you don't uh, follow the legislation for them. Another important topic to discuss is remote ID and how it impacts different class marked drones and when. We now we do have a full remote ID video coming very soon, so keep an eye out for that one. But for today, I wanted to include a very quick explanation. From 2026, any UK one, two or three label drone will require to transmit remote ID. So this will mean any drones that are released after 2026, as they will need UK labels, 
but also any existing models that gain UK class marking where the user, us, decides to update the drone to UK labels before they must do so at the end of 2027. So if you have a choice to continue using your C label drone right up to the 2028 cutoff, then you will not require remote ID. So think carefully about the implications of changing class markings and when you do it. So by presenting the above system and implementation timeline, the idea is that there is no cliff face for UK drone users. It also, in my opinion, creates a fairly fair and level playing field. Those buying new drones with UK labels will not suddenly unlock more usability than those who purchased a drone in the UK already. Also, the allowance for so many legacy drones to keep using their existing benefits is another sign to me that this really does seem to be an attempt to make the system as fair to existing drone users as possible. Regular viewers will know that I am more than passionate in my criticism of the UK CAA when it is required, but in terms of my opinion on this class marking system, it does seem to fulfill the aim of keeping people flying with their existing drones for as long as possible. It is just a shame that we have remote ID in this mix, which, as I said, will be the focus of a, its own video, all of its own, on the channel soon. We will also have other rundowns, including a look at FPV and how that hobby, sport and industry will be impacted by the new drone code, as well as another other niche topics and a live Q&A, where we'll be answering your questions, as well as exposing you to a no doubt bright shirt from Graham. So if you are new here, hit subscribe to find out when they drop. And if you're one of my amazing Geeks Varna regular viewers, please hit the like button to make me smile. Sean out. Well, oh, actually, just very quickly, thank you to everyone in the comments of our recent videos for the amazingly kind feedback and response. Your words genuinely mean so much to me and make all the hard work bringing you this information really worthwhile. Right, for real this time, Sean out.